the next one that I want to talk about is called Fledgling by Octavia E. Butler. This is a vampire story, but it's definitely more of a modern vampire story. Not quite Interview with the Vampire, not quite Twilight, but definitely more that than Dracula. Uh, so it begins with a young girl waking up in a cave. She has no memory, she can feel that she's had her head bashed in, she has skull fractures, she's covered in burns and blood, and she is ravenously hungry. Someone comes into the cave and finds her and she ends up killing them and eating their flesh. This is just something she's compelled to do, she doesn't think about it and after this she begins to heal. Upon leaving the cave she finds a lot of burned out houses, it seems like a community, a small village and she's wondering did she live here, did she have anything to do with this. She finds some clothes and starts walking and a man called Wright stops and finds her, thinks she's a lost child who needs to find a way home and he offers her a lift. But things take a strange turn then. So she has no memory of where she's come from or what she is. She has an effect on Wright and he has an effect on her and it becomes an uncomfortably sexual relationship here. Uh, it does turn out later that she's actually a 50 year old vampire, so in vampire terms she's still a minor, she's she's not ready to mate yet, but uh, she has the body of a an 11 year old, 10 year old girl, which makes the whole story a little bit uncomfortable to read for me, definitely anyway. Um, so the story is about her trying to figure out what happened, what happened to her, where her family is. Um, she discovers that she was living at this compound with some family members and there's someone or some people, a group of people out to annihilate her and her family. It also turns out that she is a genetically engineered vampire. So while she had a family and she was loved, she was made specifically to have darker skin and to be able to stay awake during daylight hours and to not be annihilated by the sun. She still gets a little bit burned but she can go out in the sun if she needs to and she is the first of her kind to be able to do this. The story sort of centres around, partly around her trying to figure out who tried to kill her, who tried to kill her family, but it's mainly an explanation of the realm of vampires in this universe and how they interconnect with each other, how they live in these communes of men and women always separated, um, how they use human symbiotes. Um, so Wright, the person who finds uh, Shori, which later she finds out is her name, becomes her first symbiote and it's someone who she draws blood from and they derive sexual pleasure from this and it becomes a relationship um, they can't possibly make in this world. Vampirism isn't a something you can pass on, it's not a virus or anything, they're a completely separate species but they can live together with humans. Humans give them blood so that they can live and their venom allows their symbiotes to live for longer and to not get sick and all that good stuff but unfortunately they need about at least five humans in order to sustain themselves because they can't be draining one person every night or they'll harm them. So it's her trying to figure out all of this and it's her trying to make her different symbiotes okay with that deal with the jealousies there and stuff. I did find this story initially very interesting, um, but by the end of it I was rather bored. Um, Butler's writing is very straightforward, it's very easy to get into the story and to get in with the characters, but the whole thing, it was almost like reading a textbook about how these vampires work together. Um, I was reading it as an ebook, and when I got to about 80% I just 
sort of started skimming through all of the explanations because Shori doesn't know anything about herself or other vampires. She's just getting a lot of things explained to her. Um, it was also very... I'm not sure how to explain Sort of sanitized. It was all very perfect. Like a, a utopia. Um, they're, the vampires are very into a weird consent that they'll only, they'll ask humans to join them, but first of all, they will bite them and they will get the, the sort of, the good feelings out of their venom, um, so they sort of get them hooked, um, although they could leave if they wanted to without dying, but they're psychologically hooked first, so they get them psychologically hooked and then they say that they, you can leave if you want to, but it doesn't really seem that way. It still seems weird and given the fact that there is sort of a, a theme about uh, polyamory and sexuality in this. Um, Shori takes men and women symbiotes, it doesn't really matter to her. Um, some of these humans are straight though, the women are straight, um, but when it comes to vampires, the, the venom just takes over and it kind of wipes out that part of their identity. So it just, it was odd and the whole, the way that they live in their communities, um, it was very goody goody, everything's perfect, we can live perfectly with humans and everything's good until this one bad thing happened and it just was rather boring. Um, also, the, the fact that she does look like a ten-year-old child is very weird throughout the entire story because not only does the man who finds her and other human symbiotes she takes find her very sexually attractive, um, other older vampires find her very sexually attractive and ask her to, to mate with them and it's, it's weird. But, um, Definitely interesting as a new vampire story, there's a lot of themes of race, about um, symbiotic relationships, about sexuality, and about otherness. Um, part of the reason why her family is attacked uh, is because she's the first vampire to have black skin, dark skin, um, and of course all of the other vampires are blonde, white, very white skinned, pale people, very Aryan looking. Part of the reason that she was attacked is because she has dark skin so there's a obviously a racial und undertone to that as well. Not really my thing. If there's other books in the series I'm not sure but I wouldn't be picking them up. Um, I would definitely read more of Butler's writing uh, but this one for me it was probably a two and a half star. It just wasn't, wasn't my thing. Next up for me was the novella Cirque Berserk by Jessica Guess. Uh, I'd seen a lot of this on Instagram, I'd seen the cover in a lot of places, I was instantly drawn by the rollerblades myself, but this one is a classic horror tale of a bunch of teenagers on their graduation celebration who decide to take a run out to this abandoned theme park. Things go awry because obviously they are there on the anniversary of a horrible massacre that happened where a bunch of teenagers actually killed people who were attending the park. They want to go and check out the spookiness that's going on there. So without giving too much away um, because it is such a short book, I loved Cirque Berserk. It was surprising, it was, it was really well written. It takes some of the usual tropes of, you know, the black best friend or the the black character in a horror movie who always dies first, um, turns those, turns that in its head. It turns the whole teenagers going to this haunted place to get slaughtered on its head. It was really different, really unique storyline. Um, it didn't end the way that I thought it was either. Uh, there are good guys and bad guys in this story and you really start to feel for the bad guys, surprisingly. Um, so I, I really loved it. If you're looking for something a little bit different, a 
teen slasher with uh, something unique in it you should definitely pick up Cirque Berserk by Jessica Guess it's got violence it's got undying love it's got teenage heartbreak and uh, it's got rollerblading I may have been reeled in by the entire book opening with my favourite song I Wanna Dance With Somebody by Whitney Houston that could have also coloured the entire book for me, but you should definitely still check that out. The next one that I read was The Deep by River Solomon with David Diggs, William Hudson and Jonathan Snipes. Now this was really interesting. I didn't realise until the end. Um, the other names that are included here are to do with uh, musicians. So a lot of this book is based on music that was written by these musicians and they sort of collaborated to come up with this story together but it was written by River Solomon and it is sort of a fantastic reimagining of history where the pregnant black slaves that were thrown off of their captured boats uh, out in the ocean were able to give birth to human mermaid hybrids who then created their own underwater uh, cities and underwater culture and everything but they obviously have a lot of trauma in their past and it's too much trauma for them to hold so each generation uh, picks one person to carry the weight of all of their memories um, so that they can know their history, know the history of where they came from and know the bad stuff that happened to them but so that they don't all have to bear that burden this person has to bear it all of the time except for three days a year where they unburden themselves to the rest of the community and they get to remember where they came from and the historian gets to get a bit of relief. So The Deep tells the story of Yetu who has been the historian since she was 14 years old. She has always been a very sensitive person and this is one of the reasons that she was picked for this job by the last historian but unfortunately she is just too sensitive for this. She, she can't be around people, she can't be near people. She is beginning to be completely weighed down by the weight of the memories and the burden of the memories and it's completely eaten away at her entire personality and she feels like she is nothing but this empty raw vessel um, that is beginning to get taken over by these memories. There's, there's a memory that she has of someone going and getting eaten by sharks and this memory takes over her so much that she goes to sharks and her mother has to save her from that. So that's where we're led into the story. Um, she is late uh, coming with this this three day event where she, the remembering where she passes on memories to the rest of her community. And once that burden is lifted from her, she is unable to take it back anymore and she runs from her city, from her family and much like the Little Mermaid, uh, she ends up on land. She ends up um, on land to heal her her body and her mind, and is befriended by some humans there. And it's at this point that she she wants to try and reach back to all of the memories that she had of the humans that birthed her mermaid family but she can no longer remember because she's she's given all those memories away. Um, <clears throat> so that's the gist of the story. It is uh, obviously a, a fantastical reimagining of a horrible part in history where these kidnapped women were unfortunately murdered, but the story in itself is about the, the burden of memory and the but also the importance of it. So obviously for a lot of people who are descended from uh, black slaves, a lot of people around the world who have these sort of horrible memories in their history, it's, it's always sort of a struggle to 
live in the moment and be yourself but also to remember what has happened, remember how you got to where you were. Um, yet who really struggled with wanting to keep the culture going and the memories going of all these things but also wanting to be herself and be free of these horrible negative things uh, that have happened in the history of her people and she sees other people, other mermaids just living their lives and being able to have friendships and relationships and knowing enough but not having to know the real horrifying details of what has happened in their history. Um, you really feel for Yetu, uh, it's, it's really well written, you're with her the entire way and it's a very interesting way to use the, the sort of mermaid mythology and to couple that with the themes of race and the themes of otherness and the themes of knowing yourself and knowing your your history and knowing your people and the idea of a, a homeland as well. She meets a human whose entire family and entire sort of homeland was wiped out but she still feels a connection to the physical place where that was. Uh, it's really interesting. It's a lot to digest and it's really something that really makes you think while you're reading it and uh, I really liked it. I would definitely recommend it. Um, it's not very long either. It's only 166 pages so it is short but deep. And last but not least is When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. Now this is a thriller rather than a horror but it is definitely very dark. So it tells the story of a small community in Brooklyn that is slowly being gentrified. Uh, most of the people who live there started out being black but now a lot of new things are coming in. A new company are trying to build a, a facility to research drugs in the area and there are a lot of people trying to get uh, the people who've been living there for decades, who've inherited their homes, to sell. And our main character is a woman who is moved back to the area because her mother was very sick and she is now living in her mother's home, trying to fend off the, these people who are trying to buy the house out from under her. And she is seeing members of her community just up and leaving and being replaced by white people who are very well off, they're very, uh, they turn their nose up a lot at the, the things that have been done in the community by the black people there. They have a lot to say about the the way these people have their houses and it's not all true and they don't really want to be a part of the community. This was very much a community that Everyone knew each other, everyone was neighbourly, you could go to anyone's house, ask for sugar, ask for help, ask for advice and you would get it. But that is no longer the way. Uh, the, the book actually begins with our main character going on a historical walking tour of the area that she lives in and it is led by a white person who is only interested in the historically white people who used to live there or in the white architects who built the buildings and they're not mentioning the black people at all and they're not mentioning the people who are living there right now who have a significance to the community and she notices this and decides to do her own walking tour where she will speak about the people who are living there right now, speak about the history of the area and how it was settled by slaves and how there there have been different waves of black people living there and then white people coming in and leaving and it's a whole uh, history repeating itself type of thing and she is joined by a guy who's just moved into the area with his girlfriend but she's just broken up with him and has given him uh, an ultimatum that he has to leave so 
he starts talking to our main protagonist and they start researching and finding things very strange. Now the thriller part of this is that the black people who live in this community um, and also some of the, the white people who have been living there for years and are also part of the community are all very familiar with each other and they have all set down roots and none of them are intending to leave and yet they seem to be disappearing, they seem to be leaving in the middle of the night their house is taken over by another rich couple who say oh they went and are now living with relatives, they've, they've got a new job or something but it doesn't sit right with everyone else in the community who knows that they wouldn't just leave without telling their friends, they wouldn't just leave without letting people know that they were leaving and they wouldn't leave in the middle of the night it's very odd, very sketchy, and it's happening more and more to pillars of the community as well. So something is going on here, something very dodgy is going on with the gentrification of this area. And it all seems to be connected to this company that is setting up this drug uh, rehabilitation factory as well. So our characters are trying to figure out what is going on before they find themselves kicked out of the area and whatever that may mean. Um, so I heard some good reviews of this and some bad reviews of this but personally I really liked it. It was really interesting. It was... it's very much rooted in things we, we're seeing today. Um, a lot of areas in America are, are gentrified, a lot of areas in every country are gentrified in some way and it talks a lot about the history of different places in America and the history of gentrification, the history of using rules and using excuses and laws in order to shun whichever minority uh, the, the ruling classes don't want in that area and taking their resources and saying that you know they weren't being used or whatever even though there were clearly people there using it. Uh, at one point she mentions a historical document where the first settlers coming over from England were talking about getting rid of all of these uh, natives and at the same time saying that the land was completely unclaimed even though there were clearly people there. Um, so it, it talks a lot about the history, a lot about race relations, uh, there's a... Our two main characters are a young black woman and a young white guy and it's interesting to see the sort of dynamics between them both being aware of their races obviously and of trying to figure out how they're supposed to act with each other um, and it's just a very modern thriller but it really pulls into focus the, the history of the whole thing as well. Um, the, the people just disappearing in the middle of the night and the odd things happening. Uh, it was really insidious, really creepy. At the start of each chapter uh, there's a little extract from their WhatsApp community group where they all talk about different things that are going on and I thought that was a really interesting way to bring in other communities and to bring in the way that they're each talking to each other, both the older community members and the brand new ones um, who don't see an issue that's happening or they might be in on it, who knows. Uh, the, the sort of the climax of the book and the ending is very over the top. Um, some of the, the bad guys in the story were a little stereotypical um, they were just very one-dimensional. That was the only sort of qualm that I had with the book. Um, some of the things that they said were just like sort of cartoon stock character bad guy stuff. But other than that, um, it's very interesting, very creepy and it did remind me quite a bit of Jordan Peele's Get Out which I need to rewatch again because fantastic movie. So those are all the books that I read for Women in Horror Month and Black History Month as well. Uh, I didn't get through all of the documentaries I wanted to watch but they're still on my list. Uh, I still have 
someone, Alan, uh, commented and recommended uh, one of his friend's books to me, Breach by Candace Nolan. So I will be reading uh, Candace Nolan, sorry, Breach by Candace Nolan, I will be reading that and I shall also be reading The Good House by Tanana Reeve Jew. I did sort of leave that one off because it, it's almost 600 pages, it was the longest one, but I will be reading those in March. Uh, as well as my huge stack of physical books for my Portable Magic Books reading vlog. Um, I hope you enjoyed seeing all the cool uh, art and jewellery and stuff that I bought. I'll be giving some of those away uh, next month. But thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you spending your time with me. If you like what I'm doing here, you can like and subscribe down below. And I shall see you in the next video.